Bonjour Scott, merci d'être là. Merci. Euh, on va passer un petit moment ensemble pour parler de votre nouveauté de sculpteur qui est paru chez Rue de Sèvres en France en tous les cas. Euh, vous êtes connu en Europe surtout pour euh, des albums pédagogiques avec l'art invisible, réinventer la bande dessinée. Est-ce qu'aujourd'hui c'est compliqué de passer sur un autre sujet, sur une autre thématique qui est de la pure fiction It's a challenge to begin working on fiction again after all these years, especially after writing about how I thought it could be done uh, in my books. It meant that I had a large target on my chest for anyone who wanted to take a shot at me, you know. But I liked that. It was good pressure. It was good to have to do a good job, to, to have to perform, because it kept me in my seat drawing each and every day. L'album Le Sculpteur hein, se base sur un récit qui est très connu en Europe, hein, qui est le mythe de Faust, que tu revisites intégralement. Euh, C'est un, une histoire, un récit qui est, qui est quasiment la base de notre culture euh, latine, en Europe, en France en particulier. Comment est-ce que c'est perçu en Amérique As you might expect in America, uh, the Faust myth comes to us mostly through popular culture. Um, the average American hasn't studied the different versions of the myth you know, from Christopher Marlowe through uh, Goethe. Um, but still that idea of making a deal with the devil or with death, as in, in my case, as, as in this story, um, it's something that we intuitively understand because we all make choices every day and we all, in deciding how to live our lives, we find ourselves at that fork in the road again and again and again. And so I think this story in some ways is about how We make those choices not only in the big moments, in the big decisions in our lives, but also in those very small moments. Because that's what artists do too. How to choose to use our time, how to devote ourselves to higher ideals or to rewards in this world each and every minute. This is something we decide each and every day. What I really appreciated in this album is that it's an album émouvant. It's about intimate. C'est vraiment un album qui m'a touché, sincèrement, comme rarement un album, un comic book, a pu me toucher précédemment. Je me demandais quelle était la part d'autobiographie dedans. The character of David in the book, he has a lot of me in him because, you know, if I'm going to sit down and write a story about a young, frustrated, lonely artist, the frustrated, lonely artist I know best is what I was like when I was, say, 26, which is how old he is in the book. But he's very different for me in a lot of ways and I didn't live my life really that similarly to David. However, the woman he falls in love with, this character of Meg, she was inspired by my wife many years ago. And when it came time to write her words, I found that the words flowed out of her mouth very easily if I just shut my eyes and thought of my wife. My wife has a much larger share of that character than I think I have of David. Le sculpteur, c'est une réflexion sur l'art en général, hein, l'art contemporain, et puis la place de l'art dans la société. Est-ce que c'est un thème, une question qui t'interpelle encore aujourd'hui Quand je suis dans une autre ville, je vais toujours aller au Musée moderne de l'art moderne, si je peux. Pas parce que j'ai des intérêts scolaires, mais simplement parce que j'aime aller dans une salle et être surpris, être surpris avec quelque chose qui est bracingement nouveau, inusuel, challengeant à mes sens. Mais... Uh, but... I think my character, he feels intimidated by the modern art world because the modern art world, of course, is, is judging him in one way or another. And so he's jealous of other artists. He's worried about he's, how he's going to be perceived. He can't even walk into some museums without feeling nauseous, you know? But um, his attitudes towards the art world, they're very different from mine. Um, at one point, he becomes very angry about Jeff Koons. <laughs> You know, and uh, and some people have thought this means that I, I hate Coons. I don't hate Coons. I don't necessarily love Coons. Sometimes Coons makes me laugh. Sometimes he bores me. But uh, for him, for my character, this these are the sort of things that that burns at him because for him he sees the way that artists get acclaim or don't as evidence of a random, uncaring universe. Uh, and I do believe that's the universe we live in, you know? <laughs> As an atheist, I don't, I don't believe that there's anyone judging. I don't believe there's anyone judging good and evil. I don't believe that there's anyone judging good art and bad art. There's no, no one to judge but human beings, and human beings are fallible. 
plus globalement, est-ce que c'est une déclaration d'amour à l'art I think in many ways it's not so much a declaration of love to arts as it is a declaration of love to life. And I've devoted my life to art in many ways. My minutes. I've spent so many of my minutes, so many of my hours on art. I work very long days, seven days a week, for years at a time. So I've, I've made that bargain, you know? Mm. I've signed the papers. I've said, this is what I choose to do. But at the end of the day, the thing that brings me the greatest joy is to be reunited with my family and to spend time with them. My wife and I, we have a deal. And that is that I work very, very hard on books like this. But then when they're done, we spend all our time together. We travel, we go for a year, even two years on the road, and we're almost never apart. And this is, I fall back into the arms of life. And I think in many ways, this is most, first and foremost, a love letter to life and, well, to my wife. L'album part d'un principe ou évoque un principe dès le début qui est assez difficile à accepter en narration classique européenne, à savoir que le personnage principal va mourir tout de suite, enfin va mourir à la fin de l'album. C'est un parti pris qui est difficile à faire accepter à son éditeur. In my work, I seem to have an obsession with clocks and calendars and deadlines. All through my career, uh, a writer went back and found all of these images of clocks. Maybe it's because I'm always on the clock. Maybe because I'm always counting my minutes. But because of that, this was a very natural story for me. To give it a deadline gives it the kind of structure that I understand. I understand deadlines. And I think the reader will understand the deadlines of this story uh, because I reassert them frequently. I have counts. I'm, I remind the reader of how many days are left. But the funny thing is all of us have a number, don't we? You know, we all have a number of days left. Um, we just don't know what that number is. My character, he knows. Dernière question, plus technique. Euh, graphiquement, vous avez choisi de travailler uniquement en niveau de bleu, sur un bleu unique presque, un camailleux, et sur du noir. Hein. Pourquoi ce choix Et euh, comment, le, comment le vivre au quotidien Comment arriver à faire tout un récit sans couleur, hein, au-delà de ce bleu et ce noir I like to control everything that I do in comics. I don't like to collaborate. I don't like to be part of a team, you know. Even the handwriting in the word balloons is based on my own handwriting. It's a font, but it still looks like what the way I write. Now, I love full color, but I can't be trusted to choose the thousands of colors we would need in this book. I would get it wrong. My color sense, it's not that good. But I can choose one color. <laughs> And so, I chose this one blue color. This is Pantone 653. It's actually got a number. And in choosing it, I was going for the blue side of the spectrum because uh, it gave the entire book a slightly chilly, slightly foreboding quality, maybe a little like stone, a little cool. And I chose this particular blue because if it had been a little bit more purple, it might have seemed a little too emotional. If it had been a little bit more green, it might have seemed a little too retro, hipster, you know? Mm -hmm. That one particular blue felt about right. But the value of having that color in between black and white was mostly to clarify form. When anyone opened the book, I wanted them to instantly see the forms, the faces, the objects, the colors, the, the, the settings, so that they could fall into the story very quickly and not have to be staring for a while at lines and colors and ink. I didn't want them to see ink. I didn't want them to see paper. I wanted them to see story. And that second intermediate color helped clarify that story on every page. Merci, Scott. Merci. Thank you.